The IB are rarely so nitpicky that they'll bother to ask you about this subtle difference here. But uh, here we are on a little planet, and there is the structural formula of 1,2-difluoroethene. Unambiguously, I know which atom is attached to which other atom. And so here is uh, the arrangement. The black is carbon, yellow is fluorine, and the grey ones are hydrogen. That formula told me unambiguously how these were arranged. And yet, if I were to swap the fluorine and the hydrogen round, the structural formula is the same. Everything's still attached to everything else, but the arrangement in space is different. That double bond doesn't provide free rotation, so now this structural formula doesn't quite give me enough information because are both fluorines pointing up or one up and one down? That's called stereoisomerism. And here's another version here. This is a 1,2-difluorocyclopropane. Now, that's locked into a rigid triangle, and the fluorines, well, one can be up, above the plane of the triangle, and one can be down, and that's one sort of stereoisomer. Or, both fluorines can be above the plane of the triangle. The triangle's locked in a rigid shape, and these are two different stereoisomers. Actually, they're geometric isomers, which is a sort of stereoisomer. Uh, oh dear, I think Dr. Atkinson's got a little bit confused. We're talking about stereoisomerism. Oh, not stereo music. I hope he's going to be okay. I know that metal strings are malleable and ductile, but it looks like he's taken it beyond Hooke's law. Oh, he's, he's still got a little smile on his face. Okay, the other sort of stereoisomerism is optical isomerism, where you have a central carbon atom with four different groups attached, and the reflection is actually a different arrangement of those atoms in space, although it doesn't look like it, it is and other videos will explain why. Oh, oh, dihydrogen monoxide, I'm drowning.